terminology is like an art. Similar to how a painter starts with a white canvas, selects a painting style to work with, selects different paint, selects different paintbrushes. Or like a writer. When a writer chooses what genre to work in, if he or she wants to write a poem, or a long story, or a story for a children's book, and how the writer then chooses words to compose what they want to write, or similar to a musician. How a musician chooses a genre to work in, how a musician then chooses the rhythms and the notes to work with, to compose and produce the story they want to tell through their music. And drawing that to the tech field, just like a painter chooses the paint and the paintbrushes, the writer chooses the words, and the musician chooses the notes and the rhythm, we as engineers choose tools to work with and to apply them to a field so we can produce and innovate. And just like a painter and a writer and a musician pick a genre, we as engineers pick a field to apply our tools in so that we can innovate. And two years ago, when I started to do research in machine learning, I chose to pick my genre as the health field. Machine learning was my set of tools to work with, and the health field was my genre to work in. <clears throat> when I started my research in machine learning, I stepped in with the motivation and want to apply it in a way to the health field so that it can progress medical diagnosing. The more I became familiar with machine learning, the more I became familiar with how it's applied in the health field, and the more I became familiar with what issues there are in the health field, I landed on an idea. I eventually came to the idea of how simple, yet powerful it would be, where all you need to do is take out a phone, take a picture of a physically visible disease, and get a diagnosis on the spot where you are at any time, anywhere. So that being said, I worked more on my research, I explored the idea more, I figured out what I can apply it to, and because data is such a hard thing to come across, the focus of the disease I did end up working with was skin cancer. So I narrowed down what I was working in, the genre I was working in, and at the same time, I expanded my work and turned it into my senior design project, which I worked on this year with my teammate, Gregory Mollick. So what we have here is, instead of needing to make an appointment, to go to the clinic, to wait for the doctor, to see the doctor, to talk to the doctor, to get the diagnosis, to wait for the results, and then to actually hear the results, what I've done is restructured the process. So all you need to do is you open your app, you log in, you take a picture, and you get the diagnosis. Instead of the long process, it becomes easy as one, two, three. You open your phone, you take a picture, and you get a classification. This here is a wireframe I'll walk you through of what the app looks like and what it offers. So right here, this is where the diagnosis happens. Um, people, anyone can take a picture, they either retake it if they aren't happy with it or they submit it if they are happy with it. And once they submit it, the machine learning model processes it, spits back a result, and they see the result on the phone right there on the spot. In addition, users can go in and they get to view their history. So just like they go to a doctor and a doctor keeps track of their history, the phone will keep track, this app will keep track of their history as well. This is a close-up 
of what the diagnosis page would look like. I see red or green to help imply if it is good or not good, malignant or benign. And in addition, when my teammate and I were designing the idea, what we wanted to do was make it as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. And to do so, what we did is include a design where people can use it individually or as an organization. <clears throat> so if you have a phone, that's great. You pull out your phone, you can sign up on the app, you use it freely whenever you want, as many times as you want, one or two. But because of economic reasons, some areas might not exactly have a population where everyone has a phone. So in that case, we have organizations. And in an organization, there would be a facilitator. The facilitator is in charge of the app. They log in. They set up the patient's account. They take pictures under that patient's account. And that patient gets, that patient gets to keep all their history. So to put it into perspective for you, think about, say, a homeless center, a center. If there was a facilitator at the homeless center, they would be in charge of the app, and then as many people as wanted and as needed would come to the facilitator. They would take out the app, take an image, and get the classification on the spot, and get the privilege of saving information um, for as many patients as they need. That being said, I would like to emphasize the stage the app development is in is still a prototype as a health-related app would need thorough, thorough testing and FDA approval. So let me take a step back and explain to you the difference between AI, machine learning, and something called deep learning, which is what I worked in. Artificial intelligence is the final product. It's the final point where a machine can think and act on its own. It's a machine that is ready to be out in the public so it can independently function without a human's help. Machine learning. Machine learning is the process of where all the training is happening so that you can have an AI, so that you can have a machine that you put out in the public for, for it to be functioning on its own. And then deep learning. Deep learning is a process of training that gives you the machine learning so that you can get AI. Deep learning, as the name implies, is deep, so data is trained through many layers, which increases the accuracy, and as a result, the technology is safer to use. So machine learning includes three main categories, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement. Supervised is where I worked in, something called classification, and specifically image recognition. So with image recognition, when you train a model, it can start to analyze and distinguish whether, in this case, it's looking at a bicycle, at a building, or at a person. In the case with skin cancer, training it on the skin cancer images allowed the model to diagnose if it is a cancerous mole or not because of the training. So right here, you see one of the models I worked with. It's called an AlexNet architecture. To give you a brief overview, without getting too technical, um, the AlexNet architecture is composed of eight layers, five convolutional neural networks, and three fully connected layers. So in the five convolutional neural networks, data is processed from layer to layer so that it can analyze features, characteristics, such as lines, edges, shapes, colors, and so on to get all the traits that it needs to look out for to be able to make a classification. As it looks at those traits, it lines it up with the appropriate label, so at the end, it knows what to classify. And at the end, we have the three fully connected layers, and this is where the, the final step in the classification occurs. In this case, you see 1,000 classes. In my case, we only have two because we were uh, differentiating between cancerous and non-cancerous molds. And now a little about the random forest algorithm. So a friend of mine told me that to him, it kind of seems like an upside down tree. And I thought, yeah, it's a good way of thinking about it. 
A random forest algorithm is basically a big tree with many subtrees in which data is processed through, images is taken from layer to layer, and in each subtree, a match occurs for a specific trait. When an image is in that one subtree and it's looking at that one trait, if a match occurs, it can then go on to the next level, and it keeps trailing down all the way to the end until a classification occurs. So now that I've given you a little overview about what AI is, what machine learning is, what deep learning is in, in terms of training. Um, deep learning is AlexNet, you have many layers, you're in the forest, you have many uh, layers it goes through. I want to also mention that with such a powerful tool out there, we need to be aware of the ethics of how we use it. How do we use AI wisely? in a way that maximizes its benefits, but doesn't increase its negatives. In a way that ensures it is helping people, but also not replacing a human or a human's job. How do we make sure that the final product is safe to put out in the public? AI is powerful, but we humans are more powerful. We are who created AI. So that being said, we need to make decisions along the way that are for the best interest and sake of the final technology that we put out there. Whether it be reliability, transparency, and of course, responsibility. Making sure the accuracy is high enough, it is safe to use, people can trust it, and so on. Furthermore, we keep AI as a tool. We keep it as a tool so it's the right hand to a person, but it never replaces a person. It's there to help people, but it's not there to take a person's place. As an example with the app I just presented to you. So the app is literally a right hand for a person. They can use it as many times as they want, as many days as they want, and as many days a month as they want. They can use it anytime, anywhere. They don't have to be with a doctor. They don't have to have a healthcare facility locally. It's there to help people, and it's there to help doctors. It helps people by making it more accessible, and it helps doctors by freeing up their time so they can focus more on patients who really need their one-on-one -on -one attention or focus on moles that are cancerous because the app already did a pre classification on it. So in doing so, when we focus AI and apply it to things that matter and apply it in ways that are controlled, we really can maximize its benefits and use it in a way to progress society and help us in our everyday lives so that we live and lead a better and healthier life. It's not just about getting to the destination. It's not just about reaching point B, but it's about the process and the journey to get to your destination. So, I picked my tools. Machine learning and app development. Two strong pieces of technology individually and stronger together. And I picked my genre, the health field. And in doing so, illustrated my own art, the start of one solution to help bring medical diagnosis to people instead of people needing to go to it. So that with one image and the tap of one button, a person can know if they potentially have a cancerous mole or not on the spot. Thank you.